Hello, um, we're going to talk today about sound in the landscape, sound geographies, uh, or geographies of sound, and how these may inform your particular journeys of place um, as part of your place memory meaning assignment. Now, sound is one of those elements of life um, that we often ignore or take for granted. Sound isn't as as dynamic in our landscape as a, a human structure, um, an office block, a church, or, or as a natural feature such as a, a river or a mountain. Um, but it's there. Um, it's integral to our experience of the landscape, um, the landscape in which we all live. Um, the office block doesn't exist in isolation. It's surrounded by the sounds of the city in which it's been constructed. Um, a church isn't a church without the echo of sacred music, footsteps, voices in prayer. Similarly, we, we, we know we're standing by a river, even if we're blindfolded, by the sound of moving water. Um, the sound of a mountain changes from moment to moment with the wind and the weather. And all these sounds are, are, are an, an influence on our experience of place. Now, each of you will by now have chosen um, your, your journey of place and you'll have begun to consider the elements of that journey contained and sound is going to be an important part of that journey, even if it's not immediately apparent. So, today we're going to consider the manner in which sound may alter our experience of place. Uh, and in particular, we're going to look at how the current pandemic might have altered our landscape and consequently our experience. It's helpful to begin to develop a typology of sound in our own minds. Um, as we see from the framework proposed by uh, Van der Bosch et al, um, our relationship with sound may be understood as part of a continuum. Um, sound evokes a range of emotions um, depending on the nature of the sound um, and our negotiate your relationship with it, um, which may shift over time and space, or time and place. Sound is, is, is also very potent um, when creating a, um, a sustaining attachment to place. You'll have come across Wilkie and Robertson's uh, characterization of attachment to place. Um, childhood places and a seemingly perpetual crest of a home have a profound uh, impact on shaping our attachment to place. Um, overarching themes such as geographical imaginations, our individual and collective history, are among some of the factors which also shape our affinity with place. Now, I'd like to begin um, with a very obvious, but I think instructive, example of how our current circumstances have altered the sounds of experience and the effect that alteration has had upon a specific place. So I'd like you to watch and listen to clip number one. I'll see you in a moment. Now, you'll never walk alone as sung by Liverpool supporters at Anfield, is one of the most iconic sounds in sport. It both inspires the supporters of the club, it emboldens the players, um, and it also intimidates the opposition. Um, that song, which by the way, comes from originally from a long forgotten musical called Carousel, and has absolutely nothing to do with football, um, informs the manner in which football supporters um, perceive the stadium um, and the event. The sense of community in the singing of the song, the volume of the noise, the rise and fall of the melody, sound and place become intertwined. Um, and the song, of course, now expresses elements of tragedy. Um, it became the anthem of the Hillsborough disaster in which 96 Liverpool fans died. And it's recently even become um, an anthem of our fight against COVID-19. So now, listen to clip number two. I'll see you in a moment. 
Okay. Now, that was the sound of uh, an England game played under the pandemic with no supporters and no songs. Um, there's still a soundscape to the match, but it's not the same. Um, the lack of sound from the crowd has altered the space. Um, now, you may have noticed that some TV presentations of football matches have included um, taped crowd noise uh, in an attempt to recreate that human element to the sound of the match. Um, and the emptiness of the stadium, the quiet, has altered our enjoyment of the game and the space. We might even consider whether the lack of that overwhelming volume of expressive sound is the reason why Liverpool, particularly, aren't faring as well this year during the pandemic. Uh, I live in Leicester and that's another city that's profited from a noted atmosphere in the stadium. Um, and this year Leicester have lost more home games than away games. Um, the lack of sound has altered the balance of the game within the structure of the stadium. So the question is, why is this so? Um, the dynamics of the game are unaltered. The space is the same. Players train in an atmosphere that's not dissimilar, actually, to the second clip. It's the change in the oral landscape that's, awesome, that's uh, altered our perception. Now, um, the same can be said, of course, of sacred spaces. Uh, so to what extent does the soundscape we encounter in churches, mosques, synagogues and temples enhance or alter our response to the space? Um, people often speak of a sense of, um, of a sense of awe when walking into a great cathedral, even if that cathedral is empty. Um, great buildings have an echoing silence, as it's sometimes called, about them that's, that's a soundscape in of itself. So I'd like to listen now to uh, the next clip. Oh, welcome back. That's Norwich Cathedral. Um, silent. Just the sound of the building. The echoes from one or two people within the building. Now listen to the next clip. Okay, an entirely different atmosphere. So, <clears throat> does altering the oral landscape change that sense of faith or awe? Why would we feel a greater affinity with our cathedral because we're listening to music that's often from a completely different era to our own? Uh, why do we feel the need to fill up public spaces with sound, particularly with music? Um, I would like you to imagine um, the atmosphere of such a place as a cathedral. Um, if it was filled with inappropriate music, um, say rap in a temple, uh, jazz in a cathedral, children's songs in a mosque. These are all questions you might consider while while taking your uh, own journey of place. What are the sounds that you associate with your chosen place? Are these sounds uh, individual to yourself? Um, are they the music you play on your phone as you travel? Um, or are they the found sounds distinctive to that particular place? <clears throat> 